when it doesn't feel like a slog to you, when you're doing something that you love, you're willing to put 120% into it. But at the end of the day, it's like, I love so much what I'm doing that I, I never really feel like I'm working. It's like, if I'm working, okay. it's like, I'm working on something that's fun and I'm enjoying it. So it's like, it's, it doesn't feel like work every. Hello, hello, John, John, how are you? Oh my <laughs> goodness. I Firstly, I just want to start by saying I got so excited to talk to you because you and I share a very similar life philosophy, which is just, I mean, it's not even an acronym, which my audience is going to be surprised because I always have an acronym for anything. It's just like fun, yeah. fun. If fun. you're not having fun, what's the point? <laughs> it's so true. Man, I probably have too much fun some of the times, let's be honest, but yeah. There's no such thing, John. There's no such thing. Totally. (laughs) What was I thinking? Why don't I, let me rewind. Yes. (laughs) Fun all the time. Duh. (laughs) Yeah. Duh. Like what's the, well, well, I think we could talk a little bit more about like, because everyone's definition of fun is different. I, this doesn't mean that you're just out there you know, boondoggling your way through the world. You're having fun doing some very serious work, I would say, but it sounds like to me, you are finding the pleasure in some of the little things about your business, which by the way, is Hildy Homes. You have built yourself a tiny little, a tiny big empire. I, that sounded weird when I called it tiny, right? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. No. <laughs> no, it's relatively tiny. I, I, I... I'll classify myself as in the smaller group. (laughs) I'm I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. See, this is, but you're secure. You're like, listen, we're cool. We're cool. Yeah. Tiny empire. Yes. (laughs) I'm the new kid on the block still. I get it. I'm still, (laughs) (laughs) that's part of the fun. I like working my way up. I like learning. I like getting kicked down. I like, you know, the strategy. Like that's so fun to me. It's the learning. Oh my gosh, that's a great life philosophy. Like just if you can embrace the getting kicked down and picking yourself back up and say, well, that was a ride. Yeah, I've had many of those roller coasters. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sure we'll probably talk about this a lot more, but like I just feel like as cheesy as it may sound, like I have so much fun when I do. Yeah, there's days where I'm like, what am I doing? This is torture, like what this homeowner is not doing what I want to do or why am I buying this place or whatever. But at the end of the day, it's like, I love so much what I'm doing that I, I never really feel like I'm working. It's like, if I'm working, it's like, I'm working on something that's fun and I'm enjoying it. So it's like, it's, it doesn't feel like work every. So, I mean, I feel like I never work really, but I work all the time. So kind of like use that for, uh, the fun bite. <laughs> yeah. No, I yeah, right. Like the little preview, like yeah. editor. We're yeah. we're we're very authentic in this podcast. We talk to our our sound editor all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, please edit that out, sir. <laughs> if you could if you could please cut that part. No, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think that that's so important. I mean, that definitely resonates with me. And and it is so interesting because when it isn't when it doesn't feel like a slog to you, when you're doing something that you love, you're willing to put 120% into it, right? Yeah. You know, like it's, it's, it, you may be actually working quite hard, but you're so engaged and enjoying it. So talk to me about, because I think you, like so many of us, sort of like were fortunate enough to fall into this business, mm-hmm. right? I, I believe your origin story, were you in Malibu? Was it in Malibu or, or Maui? They're two M's. I don't know. They're pretty close in, <laughs> you know, in vibe, totally. I'm sure too. But Malibu, go with your first choice always, right? Your first See, gut. I knew it. I knew it. Yes. Well, yeah, again, they, editor, cut that out. No, yeah, but, yeah, exactly. It's kind of weird because like indirectly, I feel like I've been part of the business for so long as I, as a kid growing up, we moved over 20 something times. Like in, Oh, wow. And when we, when my dad was growing in his business, we would drive to neighborhoods like one day we're going to have a house like that. And, and we're always like, okay, cool. Yeah. And then we'd move again and then the house change. And so I feel like we were always learning about buying and selling and the real estate and understanding it. And it was wow. always a family fun thing to do. 
So when I was in Malibu, I was a starving artist and photographer trying, you know, that, that story where like, what am I going to do with my life? How I need to figure this out. <laughs> I like taking pictures, but I can't make a living <laughs> like right now. Uh, I rented a room in my house in Malibu and it just like started paying my bills. And then, you know, I ended up getting the courage to unlock in my own room and renting the whole house out. And I was like, wow. okay, this is kind of cool. Like these people are fun. The stories have been fun. I have zero clue what I was doing, <laughs> like n whatsoever. I had no idea, but it it just it just like worked its way out. And I don't wow. know. Maybe back then too, people were a, li a little bit more understanding because everything was mm -hmm. new. So if something came up, they're like, "Hey, by the way, you know, this is not really working." Like no one really cared as much. Yeah, it was way yeah. more relaxed. I feel like. <laughs> yeah, no, you're totally right. Yeah, like I definitely remember it's you did feel a little bit more like you were rolling the die. Like you'd be like, well, I'm just running a room, but it's like 25 bucks a night. Great. Like, yeah. cool, <laughs> but man. I don't know what I'm going to get. I might have a roommate that I didn't know about. Yeah. <laughs> I just <laughs> knew the other side wasn't appealing to me anymore. I did not want a full time roommate. That was like the biggest yeah. thing for me. I was like, I don't want a full time roommate. I want to come home to my space and just like dewind, regroup, get creative, and then tackle the next journey right or whatever it is yeah i, I mean yeah. I, I honestly thought it would never work i thought this concept was only going to last a few years like i was like there's <laughs> no way this is going to work this is such a weird <laughs> idea <laughs> i'll be the first to admit it <laughs> i love that yeah yeah well i you probably aren't the only one that was like oh this can't be a viable i think even when i got into the business which truly was only like 18 months ago I was like shocked. I remember Scott took me to this conference, this this tiny little conference called Verma tiny. <laughs> in Austin, Texas a couple of years ago. And I was like, I had no idea. There were so many other businesses attached to this business. Yeah, it's wild. It's super wild. <laughs> it, it is so crazy. So it's, it's exponential growth, 110%. Um, so you weren't, so yeah, you were doing this kind of on a lark. You're like, great way to make some money on the side. And then you, and then you said, okay, maybe this could be a bigger thing for me. I'm going to run out my whole house. And then the question that I always have for folks like you who do have, you know, tiny, big empires is like, how did you work yourself up? Cause I do think you bring up something really important. Like nothing is scarier than right before you buy a house. You know what I mean? Like, it's just the scariest. Like I just, I'm always at the end with the closing going, actually, maybe we should pull out. Like, <laughs> what do we really want it? Are you sure we should do this? So how did you, how did you work up sort of, I guess, the intestinal fortitude to start to invest in short-term rentals? Like, what was that moment for you? Well, I think to, to rewind a little bit, it's, it's, it's always having a good team around Ooh. you, right? Or, or people that are smarter than you in a certain space or very educated in like real oh, estate God. and whatnot, right? So it's like, for me, I just naturally enjoyed real estate as, as a, as a buyer or, you know, moving so many times as a kid right, the process right. to me was exciting. It was always my mom and I that were packing up the boxes and trying to unpack them on the next side. You know, mm -hmm. my other brothers, uh, were, you know, maybe in college or whatever, not doing, but it was kind of just a fun thing. So uh -huh. like my, my middle brother lived in Malibu at the time also, and he started getting into real estate. So he became like the master in real estate, like really wow. achieved insane goals in real estate. So him and I would talk all the time about real estate. I never personally wanted my own real estate license, but, and then when this, you know, short-term rental thing came about and like that conversation, then I started renting my room. He was kind of like asking me more questions about that side of it. So mm. it was, it was like a great, something to bring to the table and have a conversation. And he was always looking right. in a good investment you know, it, that made sense. Um, so I think like building your team is really important. I knew that yes. I was in really good hands when it came to the real estate. And then he just kind of would trust me. He's like, okay, if you think you want to manage a property and go for it, why don't you and I buy a property together and invest it on it? And I was I like, love that. okay, I'll put in as much work as possible. And then Oh my gosh, we would go to like 30 properties with this guy. And within five seconds, he would walk in. Nope, this is never going to work. We're never going to be able to remind. Oh, this is going to work perfect. Up, oh, the numbers don't make sense. Up. Oh, I'm like, I just walked in the front door. How do you, what is going on? Like, how are you? 
Yeah, I was, I was like, okay, I'm in good hands. I'm going to let him close and negotiate on this house and we'll, we'll find the one. So him and I did, we invested in a place in Inglewood next to the NFL football stadium, like two years before it was getting built. Oh, wow. Where everybody was telling us that's really risky. I don't know about <laughs> it yet. You know, there, <laughs> there was probably, I don't think there was any data at the time. Cause I don't remember looking at any data on like, right. I just looked at long-term rent. I'm like, okay, long-term rent. Maybe I can double that. Okay, that seems pretty pretty good data. Sure, <laughs> <laughs> and then just put in the work, right? So yeah, yeah. I, was, I was lucky yeah. to get like somewhat education from moving, right? And then my brother being in real estate, I knew I was in good hands when it came to real estate. I knew I wouldn't over miss something, or um, yeah, I knew we'd get a good deal if it was the right deal. So we made a good team. It was it was a really fun experience, actually. I love that. I think that's such an interesting point, right? Because when you're in this business, there is, I think, the inclination that you're going to have to wear a lot of different hats. Like you got, you got to be really good at the real estate thing. You got to be really good at the hosting thing. You got to be great at customer <laughs> service. You got to be great at design. Like it is, it can be quite a lot. Like marketing, promotion. Like it can, it can feel like quite a lot. And so, understanding where your strengths are, and then finding partners yeah. to go in with you on this that have like, you know, what you're missing in terms of knowledge. And that's, I mean, kudos to you. That's super smart. Because yeah, even just like the thought of getting my real estate license, I'm like, wait, that looks like too much. That's too much studying for me. I don't No, Thank you. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> wait, I have to read how many books? Yeah. I pretty much probably could pass it nowadays. Cause I yeah, just he gave you the so education. <laughs> Yeah. But man, that's a lot of reading and test taking. I'm like, oh, I'm going to let my brother do that. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's the advantage to having siblings. 110%. Exactly. exactly. Oh my gosh. Well, you gave me sort of this very like lovely, I, I'm going to call, I'm going to say warm and fuzzy, like the sentiment of you with your mom, like packing things up and then unpacking things. And just sort of like, to your point, like that, that new house excitement that like, you know, the, the potential that a home owns. And so it sounds like you got maybe a little bit, a little bit addicted to that. Like, you're like, yeah, let's new beginnings. Fully. Like I can't even, I'm, I'm straight addicted. No question. <laughs> I go to real estate AA. <laughs> like, like for, it, It's like a drug, man. The excitement, the nervousness, like, is it going to work? Is it not going to work? Like, there's so many things that are going on and so fast, especially in like these markets, like LA Malibu market was insane. Arizona market was insane. Right. For, so it, I don't know that adrenaline. It's like, Oh my gosh, is this the right one? Like, and then once you get it, you're like, yes, you feel like you won something. You're like so excited. You're like, this is my place. Like, and then like, 100%. I just have the, I just go overboard with like the passion and excitement of like converting this home into something special. It's like, so fun to me, like every step of the way, except oh. maybe the permits. Permits yeah, no, and working with the no. city, not so fun. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, yeah, no, That that's what always sort of stops me. I always find that very daunting. But what I like there is sort of like if you can change your mindset, right? And mindset's such a big part of it. When you change your mindset and what you're thinking is like, no, I am like, this is a blank canvas. Like you're a creative person. You're like, I'm going to build an experience, yeah. right? And like, and I think that there's something so wonderful. And what I what I find as a guest of Airbnbs and short-term rentals is like, it, it comes through, right? If you stay at a place that's like super generic, like, you know, you like there's something nice about timelessness, but it doesn't feel like a home. It doesn't feel pers like you're having an experience versus like, if you know somebody put a lot of effort into like putting a mural up or like really catering to like the environment, like you're in deserts, right? So like, what does it look like? I'm sure each one of your houses has like a salt room or something, like <laughs> so a place with idea. crystals. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hmm, maybe I need that. Yeah. Put it on your list, John. Put it yeah, on your list. If people yeah. want salt rooms. Yeah. I was like, okay, maybe she's on a salt. Maybe she has some <laughs> data that I don't know about salt room searching or through the roof. <laughs> I'm, t I'm, I'm going to make it happen. I'm the only one. And this is based on like one trip to Sedona. Okay. And like, oh, yeah. there you go. Okay. There wasn't cool. a salt room at the house we stayed at, but you know, it felt like the place where yeah, you should have I one. Feel you. I feel you. Okay. I feel <laughs> you. Now I understand why we have a salt bath. If that helps. We that keep helps a lot. Yeah. Yes. But yeah, I think yeah. that stuff is so fun, man. It, and like, I still get so nervous. Like the first five, six guests, 
because mm-hmm. I'm like, oh God, what did I forget? What did I forget? What am I missing? Like, <laughs> what's the Wi Fi password? Oh my, did I tell guests how to check in? Like, oh and then God. they get in, you're just like on pins and needles waiting for them to like respond. You're like, okay. Oh, oh, my, oh, oh, so far they wrote back and they said it's amazing. Everything's been great. You're like, okay, I'll calm down just a little bit and now <laughs> let them oh. enjoy it. And then I'll reach out to them when they check out, and make sure. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I love like, that. That whole journey is fun, man. Well, I'm sure you're get. I mean, again, I think that that like the the passion you have for it and the level of caring that you have, I'm sure comes through to the guests, right? Just in small ways. It, like you said, like reaching out and say, hey, did you get in okay? Is every? I mean, I've stayed at Airbnbs where that isn't the case. <laughs> Nobody's yeah, reached I've out. I've helped quite a few that I'm like, that doesn't look like you're putting your heart and soul into there, but okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah I, I, I've i seen that. And even I struggle with it a lot of times because my ultimate dream always is to buy and have the control over buying, partnering with somebody who wants to buy or myself buy, and then right. have the creative control to be like, this is what is needed in this area. We have to have this. We have to have that. We got to have all these fun amenities. We got to have a big screen TV with Sonos. Like, right. And then right. trying to work with like a homeowner because I do manage some properties. I'm really selective on that and I'm getting more selective because I'm, I realize that maybe the education or lack of education with homeowners, mm. they just think it's like, Hey, I put my house on Airbnb, take a couple of photos and I'm rich. You're like, <laughs> yeah, pump the brakes a little, you know, <laughs> and sometimes it gets hard because you're like, no, you have to put in a, a heater for your pool. What? That's four grand. I'm sorry. I, I can't help you unless you have a heater in your pool. There's only so much right. I can do. Right. And then that part gets a little stressful or like, where do you put your foot down? You're like, okay, this is going to yeah. hurt my guest experience. Like maybe this isn't the right fit for me. Right. Right. Well, you have a brand, right? That you're like, if I, if you're under my portfolio, like there's a level of a standard that we have. Right. And, and I want to talk a little bit more about the Airbnb versus direct booking. Um, but yeah, you have a brand that you're protecting. Well, it's so funny. I was just talking to somebody else about this and and the concept, yes, of like managing homeowner expectations yeah. and like, how can you sort of take something that to them may feel very subjective, right? Like you're saying, no, you need a heater in your pool. And then using something like data, shameless plug alert to actually show them, okay, look at the other properties in your area. Look at the amenities they have. Look at what they're making. And hey, spoiler alert, they're making 20 to 30% more <laughs> because they have the salt bath that yep. you don't have. So you're going to make back that $4,000 investment. And, you know, the first year, right? Like, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, stuff there that is interesting. Um, well, I, so because you're an OG Airbnb and I love talking to anybody that did sort of like, yeah, like just renting out rooms, just started, you know, our founder, Scott Shatford, same thing, right? Like he'd rented out his apartment, traveled through um, Asia and was like, how did I just make all this money? Like, yeah. <laughs> there's something the there there yeah. you had a long relationship with airbnb i would say i would say you've yeah. had a bit uh, quite a quite a history with them um how are you sort of ba- do how are you navigating that balancing act because i think like what's so great that i've noticed you've done is on your website right you have direct bookings again you're building your brand how would you what advice would you give folks i'll land the plane you're like what's her question does she yeah, have I'm like, wait a minute, that was a lot right there. <laughs> what do you want from me? Yeah. I'm like, Where is the question in this statement? <laughs> yeah, I it's so funny. I, I do I really like this question and I and I get this question. And I feel like I wear uh multiple hats in, in yeah. this space, right? And I feel so I have to be totally truthful and I do feel extremely lucky to be a part of of Airbnb in that journey. Like I said, I had no clue what I was doing. Didn't have the slightest idea about software or none of it. And Airbnb just made it so easy Mm. that even if you were scared, you knew you had somebody to lean on. And Mm. I was like, I can call customer service. I can ask for how, like, okay, I'm not completely my own, whatever. I'm just going to try it. Let me just try it. And then as it grew, uh, I just kept diving more and more to Airbnb at first lack of education, I guess. I thought that was the only way you did it. I had no right, other idea. Right. I didn't even know anything else existed. Um, but I've always been like a brand person. So I knew from day one, I wanted to build a brand, even if it was my own name or Hildy Holmes. Like I just enjoy the brand 
as- aspect of it. I think it identifies, you know, okay, this brand is doing, you know, great things. Let's, let's see if they have other properties. So that yeah. was always really important to me. And Airbnb being at the time or now still was the biggest brand. So for right. me, I was like, okay, I want to learn as much as I possibly can and educate. So as I went through this journey with Airbnb, I applied to be a photographer one time, wow. where it was like a staff photographer. And I started shooting for Airbnb, not for the money. It was more just like, I just wanted to learn. I wanted to see other people's listings. Oh, that's I wanted so to cool. See what Airbnb thought about photos. Like they're like, Hey, we don't like the lights on. We don't like angles. I'm like, Hmm. Okay. This is very interesting. I love this. You were like infiltrating. You were like a spy. <laughs> I was a full spy. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. A good, a, yeah. And and then one thing just led to another with the lockdown and all that stuff. Yeah. I was just in the process of one of my places in Scottsdale becoming a plus listing. And I went through months of going back and forth with Airbnb and, and styling and just learning so much. It was like unreal. I was like, wow, I have a, a lot to learn. And I built something pretty cool here that Airbnb is reaching out, wanting to add me as a plus. Like, wow, this is really cool. Totally. But then- the literally the last steps was photos and the lockdown happened. They're like, sorry, we're not going to be able to go live. And I'm like, funny, funny thing is I'm a photographer and actually shot for you guys with Airbnb before I know what I'm doing. How about I shoot it? And they're like, are you sure? I was like, 100%. I was like, so I shot it. I submitted the photos. They're like, Oh oh, yes, this is perfect. Approved. Approved. Barely snuck in. I think I was the last listing before the, whole plus department went, uh, you know, went under, which was, which was sad. <laughs> oh it's, my a love, it's a love thing. Yeah. But that oh, led to that. opening all those doors within Airbnb reached out to me and they're like, Hey, we're starting this program about ambassadors, ask a super host and educated new host to join the platform. And I was like, sign me up. Like, I love I'm this. like, this sounds so fun. I'm like, cool. And they had no agenda where it was going. I was like, I think there was only two, two other people that were in this program and Nobody knew what, where it was going. Airbnb <laughs> employees had no idea. We had no idea. It was just like, okay, sounds cool. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's see where this goes, right? Yeah, let's see what yeah. happens. <laughs> so I think the other side of that question was, you know, you're, you're really deep in bed with Airbnb and yeah. then direct, direct bookings, right? So I think like- Oh, well, yeah. That, Thanks for that, helping me with my question, John, for starters. <laughs> I had to take notes over here. I was like, okay, part two of three- <laughs> Yeah, I think direct booking just goes straight to building a brand. I think Airbnb Mm -hmm. understands and Airbnb knows that like they can only capture you for so long, right? And Mm -hmm. as much as I love Airbnb, there's definitely flaws. There's definitely headaches. There's definitely complications, right? But the good way is the evil. You you just have to pick your battles. You can find, I don't really, I'm not a guy that likes to sit on the negatives. I'm like, let me just figure something on how to do, fix it. Right, so, right. You know, I think Airbnb understands that. Like, as long as you're not crossing the line and trying to promote your direct booking like crazy through their platform, and I don't think there's any harm to, to be done at the same time. But um, direct booking has was one of those things that was beyond scary. I was like, "This yeah. is so scary. I'm on my own. I got to get insurance. I got to get paperwork. Oof. I got to get Oof. deposits. <laughs> I got to get a website." Like, <laughs> it took me way too long to, to finally go down that path, but. That's a, but that you bring up a really good point because I think sometimes people sort of make it seem easy. They're like, go direct bookings. And it's like, well, wait a minute. Like yeah. there's some, you know, again, there's, there is a benefit to going for set with someone who is handling a lot of the stuff like the insurance and the cancellation policies and everything else for you. Well, may I ask you a somewhat loaded question? Not loaded, but it's just like putting you on the spot a little bit. Are you still doing both? Are you listening on Airbnb and direct? Oh yeah, for sure. Definitely. Yeah. 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 How much of, how much of your business is coming from direct? Not enough to be honest. It's still such a learning curve. Oh, interesting. You know, and I'm still very, I'm probably way more selective on who books direct just because of all those unknowns. Right. 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 You're like, do I have to run a background check on you? Now I have to stock you on Google. Who are you? Yeah. And yes, I do have to do all of that. So like, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so yeah, I, I mean, I work really close with super hog that does all my background checks because in Arizona, it's Very a state cool. law. We have to, you know, so that's one less hurdle that makes it a little easier to do direct booking, you know, setting up 
all your info and, and then just trying to be a human to the next person on the other line. You know, they're right. like, I'm trying to rent your place. You're like, okay, let's, let's jump on a f- old school phone call or some emails. Most direct bookings I feel like have come through a source that I trust either my Instagram or a friend of a friend, or maybe they mm-hmm. stayed with me before and right. you know, have a family that are coming back. So right now I'm kind of like in that phase, but I think it's really, really important. Yeah. I but I, I think it honestly helps you with your Airbnb as well. I think they both go hand in hand. If you're building a brand, my thought is that brand sits on Airbnb still or Verba or booking.com or whatever. Right. Right. So right. If they Google you, maybe they're not, maybe the guest isn't comfortable yet booking direct because that's still a learning curve. I feel like, but then if they see you on Airbnb and it's still branded the same, has the same messages, they're like, okay, this guy knows what he's doing. This seems right. like a good host. This doesn't feel like fake photos. I'm going to show up the listings, nothing what it looks like. Because there yeah. is a lot of that unknown. And I think right. if you're on, going, both yeah, on both yeah. sides. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I think yeah, building yeah. the brand, having the direct where they feel more comfortable, they can reach out. Um it, it, it helps. Well, I mean, I, I've had many people go, oh, I found your website, but it, it's just easier for me to book on Airbnb. I'm right. Like, oh, right. No, no problem. Yeah. Like one yeah. feeds the other so nicely. And, you know, either way, building up sort of a Rolodex, I think of like um, reoccurring customers, so to speak, and just folks that know about you. And yeah, a hundred percent. That's super cool. Um, well, thank you for clarifying that and also helping me ask the question, the because que- that was exactly the question. I was like, what advice would you give folks about where they should be listing and how they should be thinking about that? Um, well, I think to answer that real quick too, I think yeah. the days of opening yourself up to one platform and one system are, are mm. long gone. They're mm. long, long, long gone. I think there's way too much competition. You have to be everywhere at this point. Yeah. Even yeah. if you don't book ever on booking.com that traffic might lead you to a direct or whatever. Right. So. Yeah, no, that, that's such a good point. And something I hadn't really thought about, but the, definitely like a, an old marketing trick too. Right. Which is just like, you got to kind of just show up in the right places, but it's very hard to know exactly which channel was your conversion channel. Right? Yeah, totally. <laughs> so totally. you have to hedge and be like, yeah, they may see me on booking and then go book me at Airbnb or they may go to my website and then go to Airbnb or vice versa, or right? Vice versa. Who knows? Yeah. Ah, yeah. oh, super interesting. Well, I think the other thing um, that you and I could talk a little bit about, because I know you've been pretty active and I know you've been in some markets that have seen so much change in just like what the rules are, the rules and regulations, as they say, around operating a short-term rental. And again, you're an OG in this space too. So similar question, because one of the things we really try to emphasize for folks on the podcast is like the importance of of getting involved, right? And it's sort of like, it's the old democracy message, but it's like, hey, if you're not going to, if you're not going to at least show up and be involved and have your voice in the conversation, you really can't complain about what's happening in your neck of the woods. So talk to me about what your journey through advocacy has been or to advocacy for short-term rentals. Journey would definitely be the right word. (laughs) OG, I feel like, yes, somehow. Never in a million years I ever think I would say I love love being a part of this voice and a part of this conversation and group when it comes Mm. to advocacy. Never (laughs) did I think that vocabulary would be in my vocabulary. Uh, (laughs) But it's here. And a a huge shout out to, I think you know them too, is is Rent Responsibly. If if it wasn't for them taking me under their wing and kind of showing me the ropes and and understanding the the importance of my voice and Mm. what a group could do to make positive change, I don't think I would have had the courage to ever speak up completely on my own because it is intimidating. And I still get so scared going down to city hall and council and seeing these people up there like, hello, sir, what would you like to say to us? You're like, I'm not sure. I forgot. (laughs) Like, what what do I want to say to you? (laughs) Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah, you're right. Like that's a whole nother sort of public. Yeah. Yeah. But it's so important, right? I mean, and what I understand is that you sort of were one of the first ones to understand the importance. And I love, again, another great, just a great little pro tip, I think from John is like, find it, find the, the people that are doing it and doing it well and use them as resources. Right. So totally. 
you're like, guys, tell me, ladies and gentlemen, tell me how to do this. How do I be an advocate? Yeah. And I think like, I, first I, I, Edu- uh, education on both sides is everything, right? So yeah. I can't express enough how important it really is to get involved. Like it's so, if you're in this space and you're not involved, mm. kind of like shame on you. It's like, you can't be a part of this business anymore if you're not advocating some way with money, donations, your time, writing letters, emails, just being a better host in general, educating 100%. your guests. like. It, it, I love this subject now. I love talking about it because it's so important. And I think we're at a very, very critical point in, in our time where everybody says Airbnb instead of like, oh, I have a vacation rental. And, you know, sometimes it's very negative in a certain town. And like the, the way you have right. to talk about it is so important. So it's like, man, getting involved. And, and just a quick story. I think it's always fun. Like when I first yes. got involved, I went down to City Hall because I heard about a meeting that they were possibly going to change the short-term rental laws in Arizona. And I literally just invested my entire life savings (laughs) on two properties in Arizona Mm -hmm. because it was so friendly for policy and it was a state, it was a statewide bill. So I'm like, Oh, this is amazing. And then I heard about this event and I was like, Oh, wait a minute. Wait, I could actually lose my entire business. Like really, is this even a thing? So I went down there and it was me and maybe three other hosts, maybe. And there was like 200 people there that were like, burn us at the stake. No more short-term rentals. This is a disgrace. I was like, oh, wait, where's all the people that I've been talking to? All these great hosts. Where yeah. is everybody? Yeah. And then that's what fueled my fire to, to start finding the source. And that's where Rent Responsibly came involved. And then we started a board here in Arizona. We're like the largest, largest coalition in Arizona protecting the rights. And I'm really proud of what we built. We're a 501c now. It's just like so exciting. And we've helped so many cities either adapt new laws or change them or fine tune them a little bit. So, but it is not easy work, man. It is a lot of work. (laughs) I believe you. I believe you on that one. But to your point, very important work. And I, I think absolutely like the concept of being able to sort of scale the advocacy, like getting those frameworks together and like taking what you built in Arizona and being able to transfer that other up to other um, markets is the silver lining, I would say. Right. <laughs> like guys learn off of John's homework. John's already done the work for you. All you have to do is look at his playbook. Um, no, it, it, it is really hard. But I like what you also said is like, look, at it, there's a million different ways to be involved. Yeah. You, know, you don't have to just be, you know, writing a check, right? Or if that's more convenient for you and it's harder for you to have a voice or write a letter, that might be better. Um, this is great. So so what kind of progress have you been making in Arizona? What is shaking in Arizona? Oh man, it's we're like I said, I feel like Arizona is so lucky to have a statewide build for many reasons, right? Yeah. I think it's it's good for both sides. It's good. And I hate saying size because it's like, you know, the good side and the bad side, but like <laughs> for the neighborhoods, right? It helps protect the neighborhoods. It helps protect hosts. And, you know, so having a statewide just makes it a lot easier that every single city and county is not making up a bunch of different rules. So if you yeah. have a home in one county and then you have a home in a different county, It's completely different. It'd just be impossible to keep organized and stay on track. So, I mean, like we, we sit down with the opposing side all the time and say, okay, what are the, what are the things that you really don't like about short-term rentals in your neighborhood? How can we make this easier? How can we make this better? You know, sometimes it's like, no, that's not correct. Or sometimes it's the simplest thing is trash, right? Okay, cool. We're going to find a trash company that we're going to partner with. It's going to take care of all of the short-term rental trash. Cool. Problem solved. Not that difficult. Right. So it's just like education. <laughs> it comes yeah. out. Of, and then, you yeah. know, these poor, like I say poor, but they signed up for the job, right? The, the <laughs> mayor and the city council members and all, right. all, everybody involved in politics, they just have way too many bills on their plate and there's no way they can read through all of these and understand everything. So oh my gosh, yeah, it's impossible. So it's our job to get in front of them and say, Hey, look, we're humans. We're mom and pops, yeah. we're not massive corporations buying the entire city blocks. And 
and not caring. We live here. I was born here. Like my grandfather was the mayor of Arizona or Mesa for a while. Like, oh wow, I get it. And then they're like, oh, okay, How, let's talk. And then we'll show them. This is what the opposing side is talking about. This is what we're talking about. This is what on the state bill. Let's come, let's clean it up. So yeah. I kind of rambled there a little bit. No, but, yeah. it was a great, it was, I mean, so, so important. And to your point, a little nuanced, right? And I, again, I think like the takeaways for me there are like, open the dialogue, right? Like it doesn't have to be us versus them. It's like, figure out what's really bothering people about Airbnbs, right? And and also there's sort of like fact and fiction there, right? Like there's there's things that are real problems and then there's things that might feel like problems or things that people are just like generally worried about, right? Yeah. Like, oh, if I let all these Airbnbs into my area or all these short-term rentals in my area, afford housing affordability is going to be all, you know, out of whack and there's not going to be any housing for the service people. And then you're like, well, okay, let's talk about what yeah. that really looks like and what kind of housing, how that's two very different types of houses that, right, yeah. that you need. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so opening that dialogue and really unpacking why why are you feeling anxious about this? Why are you against short term rentals? And then to I love this idea of like humanizing yourself, right? Yeah. Like, look, like I'm I'm going to show up. I'm invested. I'm invested in this community, right? Yeah. This is not just about me going and just grabbing everything everywhere. Yeah, and I think it like like I was saying earlier, it's like just get involved. Like yeah. we started from nothing. We didn't know what we were doing. We slowly kept building. We got more organized. We became an official board. Right. We, now we're getting volunteers because we're organized enough. We can get volunteers. We got amazing volunteers coming forward and like, hey, we want to help write letters that everybody can use, that they can just copy Ooh. and paste and change a few things, Very cool. make it easy. It's like, wow, okay, that's amazing. Let's. And then you know, somebody from Lake Havasu just reached out to us and was like, hey, I don't see on your website that you have all the stuff about policy in Lake Havasu. I'm like. Well, do you want to help us? Because we just haven't got there. We don't have enough manpower yet. Yeah. Cool. I'll draft it up. And then they draft it up and we put it on the site. So it's like, it's always evolving, uh, which is really cool because that's what it should be. Yeah. Hosts are always coming together. So it should yeah. be a, a group effort. Oh my gosh. That's very cool. Well, I also like that you like, cause, cause the inkling could be to be like, oh man, why are you, you know, bugging me? Why are you, you know, riding my ass about not having like Havasu data, but instead you turned it into like a, Hey man, come help me out. Like, yeah, yeah I, you're right. I don't have that data. Do you have that data? Let's get some data <laughs> together. Like, I like that. <laughs> it's so true. Because sometimes you do. Sometimes you will take it personal, right? You're like, right. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying. I'm trying. We're there's only so many cities. Uh, we can't even keep up right now. It's so every city is changing. And like, please, I, we're trying. Please be nice to me. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Don't take it personally. Just turn it into an opportunity turn a challenge into an opportunity. Totally. And we've been doing these fun little meetups lately, like at local coffee shops. We, we just did mm, one in Sedona cool. that surprisingly enough, too many people showed up, which <laughs> nobody shows up for advocacy stuff, but now right, like, right. people are like, wait a minute. And it was so cool. We ended up having to go to a house because we had too many people. And then we, <laughs> you know, so we're doing these little meetups and people are really interested in the topic now and, and how to get involved and, how to be a voice and just how to be a better host, which in general is what we need. We just need hosts that treat it like a business at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. That is so funny. Like I find sometimes that not to get cheesy, but I'm going to like the universe just keeps sending out the same signals to you. And so over the course of the last two weeks, I think that has been one of the like sort of resounding drum beats that I've been hearing from folks like you, which is just like, this is a business. Like it is, yeah. it's time to get serious. Take, take yourself seriously, you know, take your business seriously, run it like a business. Um, and you know, what we've been sort of saying over here is like, yes, this is, this is, this, this industry is maturing. Yeah. It's, it's entering a new phase. And so you, you do have to evolve, right. Which hopefully is exciting for most people yeah. to evolve, yeah. but you do have to evolve with the times. Well, I promise you guys adding um, or added more information on how to search for, you know, what the temperature is in advocacy in that area or the policies or I forgot what I, I think I remember seeing that, um, which it comes back to the data. It's so important. Yeah. Like, that's probably the first thing I look at now if I'm going to buy is like, OK, what's the temperature over there? 
What's the laws? Is there any? But you guys are adding that in your stuff now, right? Yeah, we do have. So we have a regulation score in our tool. So cool. And then we just issued our 2023 um, Best Places to Invest report. Mm. And f- a shameless plug. Sorry, guys. You, know I, you <laughs> knew I was going to do it. Uh, yeah. But, you know, there were a lot of like sort of zingers in there, right? Because folks were like, wait a minute, you put Fairbanks, Alaska on there. You put Sheboygan. I think it's in Michigan or Wisconsin. Sorry. Sorry, folks in Sheboygan. I apologize. I'll figure out what state you're in. Uh, but but people were like, whoa, 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 what is this about? And we were like, well, it's about a couple of different things, one of them being regulation, right? Yeah. And so we actually partnered with our friends at Revity um, mm. and leveraged their database after we'd sort of narrowed down our list of best places to invest. And a lot of that was also based on what we call investability, which is like, mm. well, how much is a house cost you? Does a house cost mm. you in these places? Like, mm. you know, like, what is your mortgage going to look like? Like all the practical stuff that goes into actually the investment component versus just thinking about like, well, sure, you probably could make $1,000 a night, right? yeah. <laughs> but how much did it cost you to make $1,000 a night? Uh, so yeah, we definitely, we're definitely interested in that. And, and again, we are super happy to, I know Jamie, my co-host has provided like Atlanta, for instance, the city of Atlanta with a lot of data to help, right? Because to your point, like it's, if you can prove empirically uh, that this is the true situation and this is yep. the true impact of short-term rentals on yep. a community, uh, certainly helps. So we're always, always happy to help folks. It's like yourself, John, um, and arm you with data when we can, for sure. Oh, that's exciting. I'm going to have to hit you guys up for about that because, you know, Do it. I like showing Do it. real data to the city councils, not the newspaper data. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. the newspapers reach out to us often too. They're like, they're like we're I'm like, sure. okay, we're not going to help. We're not like, we're not going to help you tell the story because the data is telling us something different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good point. Good point. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, I promise not to torture you for too much longer. It's my, it's my new thing. Natalie Palmer and I came up with it. This podcast is not torture. It's, no, we're not torturing listeners or guests. Um, but I would love to know with all of this maturation of the, I, I don't know if I said that right. Um, of the industry, what are you thinking about for 2023? What's sort of your strategy going into a year that, yes, you've got regulation headwinds, you've got investability headwinds, you're operating in all these very interesting markets, still lots of demand, but supply might be coming after you. Not I'm, Now that I've depressed you, carry, carry on. What, do you, what are you thinking? How are you mitigating the risks of 2023? I, I literally almost just started crying. I like, I, oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Again, maybe this podcast is. Yeah. Well, to to dissect that a little bit, right? I think it just brings new challenges. That some of it is exciting. I think, sadly enough, it's gonna it's gonna weed out the weak, right? So the properties mm. that are just average are gonna hit really hard, like yeah. really hard. I think the property management companies that are doing it. Eh, job, you know, with the 4.6 reviews and stuff are going to get hit mm. really hard because people's hard earned money. They don't want to risk a property that they're not sure about. So if it's right. not branded, if it's not good reviews, people just aren't going to book it. Right. So I think a lot of those people are going to have to really like take a deep dive and be like, okay, is it time to update some furniture? Do we need to add some amenities? Yes. All white walls are kind of boring sometimes. Do we need to paint some white walls? Do we need to add some <laughs> wallpaper? Like, do we need to, you know, ask ourselves internally, like what's holding back? You know, can we mm-hmm. afford 5% dip in the next year? Um, yeah. So I, I, I think it's going to be a, a big reality check. And then sadly, like a part of the industry needs that a little bit, right? And it does need a little correction. Um, yeah, yeah. I think more hosts do need to step up a little bit. And, and so... I don't know. I think there's parts of me that is excited for 2023, even though it's insanely scary. (laughs) I got to (laughs) admit, you know, revenue is down. Occupancy is down. Um, Mm -hmm. The properties that, that I have that, that were really like focusing on design and customer service and all that stuff are doing well. They're, they're not the, the same numbers, but we're booked and we got, you know, great feedback and yeah. So it, it's, it's just more work maybe, you know, and you, there's a lot more that's got to go into it now. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's I well, I, that was very well said and also very realistic, which I like, right? Yeah. We, we were both very real with each other. Yeah. We're going to have a good cry and then we're going to dust ourselves off and get back to work here. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, look, I, yeah. at the end of the day, every business is going through something, no matter what 100%. business you're in, you know, it's like, if, if you're in control of your own destiny, which I like to be, I like to be in control of my own. So I'm just going to figure it out. W yeah. What is it do we need to do? Like, yeah, is, let's go to the data is, do I need a hot tub that's heated? Do I need this? Do I need to add, do, what, what do we need to do to make some adjustments? Right. And that part's kind of exciting, but it, man, it's scary as heck for sure. Like, yeah. but I'm still trying to buy. I'm, I love I'm still that. looking like crazy. I'm dying to get another property. I just confused on where, right. <laughs> with, with all everything going on. Right. It's so I have so much policy in my head and that I'm always like, mm. okay, let me dive into that first and, and really see. So, right. And, and just the uncertainty of where the market is going. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's true. But, it, it, you know, I do think fortune favors the bold, as they say. Right. So and, you know, what we talked about a lot, it's like just, you know, a lot of people looked at people who were buying in 20, you know, 08 and back in like yeah. 03. And they're like, what are you crazy? And it was like, yeah. well, that, you know, usually pays off. So but you got to be in it for the long game. You got to treat it like a business. Um you know, still lots of opportunity, but you know, again, it's not, you know, it was never passive income. That was a complete myth, <laughs> mythology that maybe got spread. A little in the TikTok business. Joe over there needs to <laughs> everybody on TikTok saying how passive it is. I'm like, really? I was weed whacking the other day for hours. <laughs> never did I think I would be weed whacking for passive income. <laughs> like, <laughs> You're like, wait a minute, am I doing this wrong? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, really? Okay. <laughs> oh my yeah. goodness. It's oh. scary. It's it's scary, but yeah. Scary fun. Oh, scary yeah. good. Yeah, scary fun. Very good. Exactly. Scary good. Okay. Uh well, again, you know, it's the lo lots fortune favors the bold and those who are willing to be brave in the in the face of scare scariness. Yes, that's yeah. what I'm trying to say. <laughs> John, I would love to wrap this podcast with you by playing a fun little game. Are you up for it? Okay, I look, I don't oh. have a choice, so let's go. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, you're stuck with me. We yeah. haven't, we haven't, we haven't come up with a conclusion yet. Uh, so the game, we make everyone play it. Okay, and again, yeah. this podcast is not torture. Uh, so <laughs> it's who, what, where. The first question is apart from yourself, because I've learned a lot from you and I really just like your outlook and your mindset. And I think it's so important to have the right mindset in this business. But apart from yourself, who would you recommend folks go to for inspiration? Wow. Okay. I mean, your podcast. Obviously. <laughs> Obviously. No, I, I just think there's insane amounts of resource, right? So like one resource you should always look is yes, you should educate yourself on advocacy, policy, regulations. That's like literally at my top of the list before I buy anything. I might dive it in. So go yeah, to rent yeah. responsibly, find out if they if they have a group anywhere in your city. That would be like one of the top things you should do if you're getting into this business or if you're in this business, right? And then there's so many amazing resources. Uh my friend Rob Bilt has an awesome YouTube channel and a great hosting community, which I teach on once a month too. Very Shame cool. Plug. Uh, <laughs> he, do, he does a great job in, on how to invest and whatnot. I listen to my good friend, Michael Efaliante, amazing guy on numbers and content, gets you yes. very inspired. And, and just, I don't know, there's so many I can think of. Um, my, my good friend, Will, has a podcast where he has a million other podcasts all about the short-term rental business. I mean, right. you can go down a rabbit hole on that thing. Yeah, so- and Shout out to Will. Shout out to Mr. Boosley because he- Yes. In so much content. So if, you're getting, if you need to learn about direct booking, definitely go down that route for sure. He's a man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was that enough? I mean, I, yeah, I no, like there's there some good ones out there. <laughs> yeah, that's, you're right. Like I didn't clarify, but you definitely can go with more than one person, a hundred percent or okay. resource. It was too hard for me to say one. 
No, I think, well, you named a few of our favorites as well. Um, we love working with Rob Bilt and with Michael Elefante. All right. Well, are you ready for the next one? I think so. Okay. Okay. It is what, what do you wish you knew that you now know when you started? Hmm. What? It's, this is a, this is a funny one because <laughs> I feel like what you don't know gives you the confidence to just do it. Ooh, such a good zinger on this one. I like that. You're like, listen, if I knew, I wouldn't have done it. There is 100%. Like there's some times where you can get stuck in numbers paralysis, right? And you just yeah. don't do it because yeah, you ran the numbers to death, right? And That's you scare fair. yourself out. So yeah, yeah. sometimes not knowing is more powerful <laughs> because you just do it, right? But yeah, yeah, I wish yeah. I would have known more about the data, to be totally honest, because it's so I didn't realize how important it is and how amazing data is and then ha able to dissect it and understand it just gives you a, just enough confidence. We're like, OK, this is the data. How can I improve? Can I work harder than that to get to the next level? Okay. Right, right. So I would think data would be definitely at the top of the list. <laughs> I wish I would have yeah. known. <laughs> I love, I love that answer. Obviously, we, oh, we, this is this is the STR yeah. Data Lab. We love no that. Taking the other table to say that either, by the way. Yeah, yeah. No, I, yeah, I've bribed him. Don't worry. <laughs> all right, all right. You, the last question is, where, if you were to hop into your hot tub time machine, where would you have invested when you first started? What's the one that got away, John? Uh, it's still haunt. It's still kind of not haunts me ish. So we've had a family house in Park City for like twenty five years. Oh, very! Right? I love that place. Oh, it's it's literally used to be one of my favorite places ever. Right, and years ago when I was just starting vacation rentals, I was like almost bought a condo and a cabin there. Like I almost bought this condo one time. Then I almost bought, and it was still price the tad too high. I got scared. I was like, I don't know if enough people are going to come here. Right. Well, that one definitely got away because <laughs> we ended up selling our family home two years ago and now I don't have any place to go in Park mm. City. And, but that that would probably be one that I, I wish that I was like, man, I should have tried to figure that out. Then that way I, I always have a ski place to go to. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Double the double purpose. Yeah, Utah got onto our radar too late too. Like I, to your point around the data, I think that's one of the things that the data can help you understand. Like as you're searching for new markets, because by the time it occurs to me, for instance, that a place is popping, it's already you know jumped the really? shark. It's already past popping. I'm like, oh, this place is popular and cool. Oh, so does everyone else thinks the same thing? Weird. <laughs> So true. Weird. So it's like, yeah, finding those little like diamonds in the rough, those like emerging markets, so to speak. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, yeah. I could, again, like talk to you all day. Uh, I'm not going to make you do that because this podcast is not torture. However, I do want you to tell people, you mentioned uh, that you're working with Rob Bilt in his master class or his coach. I think he's calling it a coach, coaching class. Host camp. Yep. Thank coach you. Camp. Host camp. I should know that. Rob, if you're listening, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so you're working with Rob on, at host camp, but where else can folks find you? Where else, if people want more of your life philosophy, your wisdom, how to get oh, an advocacy that. group started? Well, I have a, a soft launch on my personal website. So my personal website is John .co because someone took .com. How rude. I mean, that's how not rude. relatable to us over here at airdna.co at yeah, all. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So you can go to John .co. Um, I'm always really active on my Instagram, which is John Hildebrand Sicky. And then YouTube has been a, a new fun journey for me at Hildy awesome. Homes. And my direct booking site is Hildy Homes as well. So yeah, reach out because uh, I, I love connecting with people and, and it's super fun. Yeah. So this was not torture. This was fun. Come on I can't now. See, shameless plug, not torture. Well, I have I enjoyed will be expecting with you. one of those sweatshirts soon also. Yes. Yes. We'll get you. We got to get you some swag. I agree. Swag is all, it's all about the swag. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you again. That was super, super fun. Yeah, it really was. Well, John, thank you so much for joining us today.